<coughs> Draymond, we're going to start second row in the middle. <coughs> hey, Draymond, uh, Joe Mary's Arlie from Clutch Points. Um, I know defense has been a big issue for you guys so far in the series, but I went back and looked at some of the, you know, your good offensive games in years past, um, some of the stats as well, and it, it seems like in past years, this Warriors offense has hummed very well when you've been more aggressive, I guess, specifically going to the basket and posting up, like your post-ups are way down, um, you know, in years past, like, knowing that's not the biggest issue, I mean, defensively it's been the big issue, like, how, do you think that's something that you can, you know, improve? Is that something that you need to improve with this kind of roster? I think I can. I will. Um, I have to be more aggressive on both sides of the ball, not just defense or offense. I think uh, the game ties together. Uh, it all goes hand in hand. When you're flowing on one side, you can flow on the other. So um, we are a much better team when I'm aggressive offensively. So I have to be that for this team. I've always prided myself on giving the team what it needs in order to win. I think this team will need more of that for us to win. So I have to be better on this side for sure. Third row on the left side, Steve Ashburn. Uh, Steve Ashburn, NBA.com. Hi, Draymond. Um, people like us will use the term lightning rod for you. And in, in terms of the spotlights, the, the cameras, even the controversies somehow finding you, um, lightning rods actually have a purpose and they keep that kind of stuff or the bad stuff from hitting on the people. Um, is there an intent to you taking on that role in a sense and that it frees teammates to just do what they do or is it just simply your world? I mean, that's who I am, you know? Um, I'm always going to do whatever I can for my teammates. I think uh, that's just my MO, that's who I've always been. Um, in saying that, that, that doesn't excuse my play how poorly I played last night. But um, yeah, I mean, I'll continue to be that guy no matter what. Um, you know, I try not to get caught up in all the stuff that happens around me or or that for that matter. But um, yeah, I, I, I've always been that guy. And that won't change now. In the first row on the right side. Hey, everyone, Shane Young with Ford Sports. Seemed like last night Jason and Jalen got free on a few pin down actions and the wide pin downs. Do you think that's something that can be fixed in communication or what was the issue last night? What? I think it, it's fixed with aggressiveness and force. Um, you allow guys to just run freely, um, you know, and, and get to the spot that they want. You know, they're they're damn good players, especially offensive players. And so when you just allow guys to run freely and get to the spot that they want to get to, then it's tough to guard out on, you know, regardless of where they are on the floor, you just let them get to the spot that they're going. So I think it, um, you know, it's all a part of the same issue. We didn't, we didn't approach the game with the right force that we needed to, and that starts with me. Um, and so I think if I increase my force, we increase our force, it can take all those things away. On the left side, fourth row, and Kelly. Hey, Drayvon, um, I know you addressed this on your podcast last night, but and your wife posted something on Instagram. I know you say you want to shut out all the noise, but can you do that when it's affecting your family, or, or how do you do that if, if it's bothering your family, the kind of atmosphere last night? Oh, uh, yeah, I can still do that. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it can affect them, and I understand that, but for me, um, going on the court, you know, those, those people chanting that out, out on the floor, and quite frankly, my family aren't out there with me either. So at the end of the day, it's me and my teammates out there on the court versus their guys. And that just has to be what it is, channel and focus all my energy there. Um, I mean, I didn't really give much to the crowd anyway, which I kind of think was a little bit more of an issue than me. Um, than if I did, you know, so like I said, it's just about me finding that balance. And just like I said on, on my podcast, being Draymond Green, uh, I know how to be him better than any, I can be anyone else. I know how to be him better than anyone else can be him. So I just got to be myself. First row on the left side. <coughs> Dre, what's going on? What's happening? What's up? Brandon Scoopy Robinson, Dolly Sports. Over the last 24 hours, you've seen a lot in talk radio, when TV, as well as just experts, whether they're former players, commentators, and more, talking about you. I want to take a different approach here. 
<clears throat> and a lot of times old heads talk about what the young people should do. My question to you is, I know for me, the 90s, Charles Barkley, Charles Oakley, Anthony Mason, and more were guys that I respect and I see flashes of that in you. Who are the guys in the 90s that you respected then that you still respect now? I definitely respect those guys you just named. Um, Dennis Rodman, I uh, had a ton of respect for his game, how he approached things, um, you know, and the, the force that he always brought to the game no matter what. Um, you know, a guy who, <clears throat> you know, most people would say was a little off his rocker. <clears throat> Didn't affect him one bit. Uh, if you said Dennis Rodman was off his rocker, he'd go further off the rocker, you know? And so um, I respect guys like that. I think the thing you have to remember is I was born in, in 90. And so um, as much as I had the opportunity to watch those guys, I was six, uh, you know, when the Bulls won a championship in 96. I was eight when they won their last championship. And so, um, you know, a lot of that is, is going back and like just watching, you know, and, with the true understanding of what's going on. You know, I watched it when I was six, I watched it when I was eight, I absolutely loved it and enjoyed it, but you, I didn't understand the game within the game um, when I was six, you know? And so a lot of my knowledge of those guys and, and appreciation goes back. I mean, it comes from going back and watching that stuff and seeing how guys operated and how they played. And, and so, you know, I have an appreciation, but I also have an appreciation for guys that still play like the 90s and the two, early 2000s, Ben Wallace, um, you know, who was an extreme enforcer, Ron Artest, uh, Steven Jackson, you know, guys who was really about all of that. And, and so, um, you know, where, where they had more of that spirit and they kind of came up through that era. You know, I watched a lot of those guys. So uh, more so than it just being like, these guys from the 90s that just so deep. Like, man, I was, if it's anywhere between the 90s, I was zero to nine. And, and so my recollection of those guys just isn't as strong as it is the Ben Wallace's and, and the Artes and the Steven Jackson, guys who I really watched um, and understood when I was kind of in a space of, or at a point in my life that I, understood the game, thoroughly understood the game of basketball, and like I said, the games that's going on within the game. Two more questions, second row on the right side. Chloe Manning, CLNS Media, Draymond. What stands out about the way the Celtics are guarding Steph, and just you guys in general in the half court there? Steph's hitting shots, but it feels like they're forcing them to hit really hard shots from deep. Uh, I mean, they're, they're a great defensive team. You know, we knew that coming in, that, you know, they pride themselves on it. that end. That's, what changed their season this season. I think they started 11 and something I saw. Um, and what changed their season is their defensive presence. And so uh, they're going to make things tough. That's, that's why they're in the NBA Finals. And you know, that's why we're in the NBA Finals. Uh, you know, they're a very physical team. Um, they have a lot of size, a lot of bulk. They try to muddy the game up. So I think it's important that you know, we continue to move the ball, uh, move bodies, not just standing still to where they can just muck the game up and use their hands and, and, and chuck guys. I think, you know, uh, if, if, you, if you're moving, the ball movement and, you know, guys are moving without the ball, then it's a lot tougher to grab and chuck and hold and all of, that, and all of those things. And, and you, you don't allow them to play so much to their strengths as we did last night. Are you, are you kind of noticing the bigs playing a little low on him? Because I'm just I'm trying to see, you know, he's shooting really deep up there. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think their bigs are. And, you know, that's obviously, you know, when you're guard or Steph Curry, you, you have to kind of pick your poison. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, they're picking a drop, which is, which is great. I think there are some things we can do to capitalize on that. Um, and I think, you know, there are times where you've seen in this series where we have. And so we just got to continue to do that more consistently. And I think if our, you know, if, if we bring the force on the defensive end, then, you know, it, it allows you to see more of that, you know? So, well, like I said before, the game all ties together and we have to tie it together. And it starts with me. 
Thanks, Trent. Marcus, you had a question back there? I saw you kept raising your hand. What you got for me, dog? You, you guys have been playing maybe seven deep. Uh, do you feel like depth, you know, getting more guys in and leaning into what got you through the season might be a solution? Or do you feel like it's on you, Steph, you know, Clay, to basically get it done? I mean, it's on us for sure. Um, you know, and those two guys did their part last night. I didn't do mine. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's always going to be on us regardless of how deep we go into the bench. You know, and saying that, I think, you know, that, that has been who we always have been. We've always relied on our depth. Um, I think, you know, there's a fine balance that you have to find there uh, with, with, as a coaching staff. You know, you don't want to go too deep into the bench and then you're, you're messing up guys' rhythm uh, that, that are – playing the big minutes. And then at times you do want to go deeper into the bench. And, and that's always the game, you know, that, that coaches are playing and trying to figure out. And I think that, you know, at times you get it right, at times you get it wrong. But ultimately we trust our coaching staff and, and know they get it right way more times than they get it wrong. So we're going to trust in what they decide. Uh, if they decide to go deeper into the bench, you know, it's great. Um, we have guys on, on the bench that are more than capable of coming in any game and contributing. Uh, if they don't, then it's, you know, that's on us to work our minutes, whatever those minutes are, whether it's 35 minutes, whether it's 42 minutes, we got to work our minutes. So um, do I think the depth help can help us? Yes, because I just believe in our guys that we have uh, that can come off our bench and provide. So, uh, if, we, if, if Coach Kerr decided to go deeper into the bench, it will help. Um, because I have faith in those guys that he'd be going to. If he doesn't go deeper into the bench, then, you know, it's on us, guys who are playing the majority of those minutes that other guys will be getting, to make sure we're bringing that force for 48 minutes, uh, regardless of what the situation is and what may happen. Thanks a lot, Trent. Jordan Poole is coming up.